everyone i am dubhor singh and today we'll be discussing the 26th problem of the cp31 sheet under the 1300 rated parameter so as you can see this is the cp31 sheet and the 1300 rated problems have been selected and this is the 26th problem wow factor recall that a string a is a subsequence of a string b if a can be obtained from b by deletion of several or possibly zero or all characters and they've given an example for how substring can be formed the wow factor of a string is the number of its sub sequences equal to the word wow bob wants to write a string that has a large wow factor however the w on his w key on his keyboard is broken so he types two v's instead little did he realize that he may have introduced more w's than he thought that is if we consider a case when he wanted to write two w's he will write four v's but four v's when he types four v's there are three individual w's right that we can choose first taking the first two v's or taking the middle two v's or taking the last two v's together right so two consecutive v's form a w and then they have showed an example of how we can get like total number of wows in a string which will be the wow factor of the string and then given a string s we have to print what will be the final wow factor of that string and also we are given that it is not guaranteed that it is possible to form s that is like replace every two v's with a w and form a string something like vov can also be given to us so this is what is given to us in the problem so let's try to understand the problem with this example that is 3 v's o and then 3 v's So we have three V's over here, O, and then three V's. Okay. So this is what is given to us. Now we need to find the number of wow we can get as substring from this string, right? And there are like this string does not have, or rather we can we have to find the number of subsequences which can be wow, right? And this string does not has any W, so two V's together form a W. right so two consecutive v's form a w okay so like what are the total number of w's that we can get or like how can i get all the w's in the string i can get one w like this right let's remove this as well so i can get one w like this i can get one w like this i can get one w like this and i can get one w like this right so i have two w's over here and then i have two w's over here right that is w's W something like that, right? So I have two W over here and uh, two Ws on each side and O in between, right? So total number of unique vowels I can get is I can choose this W that is these two two Vs together O and then these two Vs or something like these two Vs O and then these two Vs. Basically, I can choose any one of the two Ws from here, any one of the two Ws from here, and put the O in between and get a vowel, right? So total number of Vs would just be two into two, which would be Four, right? Total number of vows we can get out of this string is four, which is the wow factor of this string, and that is what is given to us as the answer. That the wow factor for this overall string is four. So we need to find the wow factor for this given string to us in our problem. Now let's discuss the expected time complexity. So we are given that the length of the string, let's call it n, is at most ten raised to six. Okay. So length of our string s, let's call it n for now. Is ten raised to six, right? And we know one second in code forces corresponds to approximately ten raised to eight operations. So anything of the sort of order of n, order of n log n, should work. But if you go in higher complexity, such as order of n square, then that will give us TLE. Okay, so that is it for the expected time complexity discussion. Now let's try to see how we can solve this problem. Okay, so C. We have to form a sub sequence W O W, right? So the first thing that is there, a sub sequence of size three, like forming a sub sequence in itself indicates that we should be using something around a DP, right? Because that is how we keep track of sub sequences or the total number of sub sequences. We usually form DP, and how do we form the DP? We just say that our like first state would be that we have not chosen anything till now. Second state would be we have chosen one element for a sub string. Third. Case would be we have chosen two elements for a substring and four, uh, so on and so forth, right? Something like that. So if we take it analogous to our example over here that we have to form, we'll have a DP zero state where 
we have taken uh, sorry we'll have a db0 state where we have not chosen anything till now that is we have an empty string so like number of ways to have an empty string till an index i right db1 would just become number of ways to choose one w or right where w represents two consecutive v's so it's the number of ways to choose two consecutive v's till some index i right then next state will represent number of ways to choose w o and the last state would represent w o w right so you'll have like four unique states for each index in our db right so what does the, each of the state represent dp of i of j would represent till index it would be number of ways to get j that is j j0 would be empty string j1 would j equal to 1 would be uh, a w till now j equal to 2 would be w o till now and j equal to 3 would be w o w now w o w till now right so number of ways to get the j state of our string till index i till index i right so our overall size of the db would become size of n and 4 right so a 4 cross n db is what we will be forming where each of the j state or like the second state the j state would represent the state the length of the string subsequence that we have chosen till now the subsequent string that we have chosen till now and i represents till what index have we considered our original string right so till index i can how many ways in how many ways can i form j will be dp of i of j right now the only thing down two more things that we need to look at is how will we define base conditions for our dp and how will we find define the transition states right so for the base condition for the base condition we have a very simple base condition of the empty string right that is dp of i of 0 right it represents we have chosen nothing till now right so number of ways to choose nothing till an index would be one right that is till whatever index whatever i have some v's i have some o's i have some v's uh, sorry i have some v's whatever and i'm looking at some index over here let's say this index okay so till this index not choosing anything that is i have not chosen anything for our uh, current uh, case of or current like i have not number of ways that i don't choose anything till now that is i'm at an with an empty string would be one right that is i haven't chosen anything right so this is our base condition that dp of i of zero would be one for all i right for each index i can have that i haven't chosen anything till now right that is one of the cases that can be there and this will be our base condition now we have to look at the transition states right now for the transition states we'll have a transition state when we get w And we have a transition state when we get O, right? And for W, our condition would be, look something like S of I is equal to V and S of I minus 1 is also equal to V, right? So if S of I and S of I minus 1 both are equal to V, then we get a W, right? And for O, our condition for this like satisfying or running the transition state for O or transition condition for O would be that S of I should be O, right? Very simple for O. And for W, we'll have S of I and S of I minus 1, both should be V. Then we have a W at S of I, right? So these would be our conditions for the transition states. Now, what will be the transition state or how will we uh, define a transition? Let's see, right? See, we are initially for 0, let's just take the state, right? We have 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So our dp of size n cross 4, so we're looking at the j values, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, that is an empty string for 0, a w for 1, w, o for 2, and w, o, w, w, o, w for 3, right? So for this, when we get w, okay, just look at a case when we get w, okay? When we get w, I can choose this w, that is, I can go from 0 to 1, right? That is, I selected this w in our subsequence. This is one transition state. I will get, I will choose w, so my empty substrings, the number of ways I had empty substrings till now, I will get that, I can add that to the number of ways I get w till now, because I can choose the current w, right? And the second thing that can be done at w is, the number of ways I had w o till now, See, I had W O before this index or before 
this point, right? I had W before this point. How many ever number of ways I had W before this point, I can choose the current W and get W or W, right? I can choose the current W and get W or W. So I have two specific conditions or two specific transition states for getting W, right? So we'll have getting W, right? And what will be the transition states? Let's say I'm running my DP in uh, one base indexing, right? So when I'm looking at S of I, I will be looking at DP of I plus one. Okay. So I'm just taking one base indexing because it will be easier to handle some edge cases or like I don't need to put extra conditions, right? That is why I'm putting uh, one base indexing. So DP of I plus one in this, what should I add? Okay. So first let's look at the transition state from uh, empty string to W, right? From empty string to W that is from zero to one. So our DP of I plus one of one, right? In one, I'm getting new values. And what are those values? Whatever I'm getting from zero, right? And it will be DP of something of zero, right? Now, what is this something? Okay. Now let's try to see what is this something. Okay. Let's try to see what is this something. We have two V's, right? This is S. Oh, sorry. This is I and this is I minus one, right? We have two V's over here. So these two V's together are forming my W, right? So that means my O would be somewhere here or something like my sum value would be here from whatever number of times I could get the W or number of times I could get a value from here. I would be adding it to this place, right? That is if I'm at I, I will be adding the value of I minus two. Right. If I'm at I, I will be adding the value of I minus two. Since I've taken one base index and I've written DP of I plus one, my condition over here will just become I minus one, right? Because whatever this value is minus two will come here. Right. And I hope you are able to understand why we're getting minus two because we'll, the minus one state has the V which we are including and the current state has the V which we are including. So whatever is there before it is what has to be added. Right. And very similarly, so very similarly, we would get DP, we'll get this transition condition of WO to WOW that is DP of I plus one of three in that we will add DP of I minus one of two, right? This is the condition overall conditions for getting W, right? And now when we get O, the transition states for getting O, right? That is what remains. So. For O, we have only one condition, right? Only one place. That is when I'm at a currently at W, I can choose an O and I can get a W O, right? So there's only one transition state that is from W to W O, right? So we'll get DP of I plus one of two, right? That is in two, we are adding values for one, right? And over here, so this would be plus equal to DP of something of one, right? And what is this something? Now see for O, we will have only one value, right? Only one current I, right? That is for O, whatever my string is, my current I is at O and whatever was there before it, V, V, O, whatever was there before it, I could have chosen it, right? That is why I will only look at I minus one. That is I can directly add the value of I minus one over here because I'm only looking at I, right? Only I is contributing to my uh, O. For W, we were going to I minus two or we were going two states behind because there were two V's, right? And as we could see in our condition, S of I minus one was also contributing or we were selecting S of I minus one as well. That is why we needed to add the I minus two part, right? So over here, because I have S I plus one here, I've taken one based indexing in my DP. Over here, I'll directly get I. So this will be my transition state for zero or sorry, this will be my transition state for O, right? So. This is our overall DP solution. We'll have a DP of size n cross four, where uh, our DP states represent that till index i, I am at the jth state or jth length of our substring, right? So zero length, one length, two length, or three length of our substring, right? So till index i, number of ways to get j length of substring is my DP of ij. Then I'll form my transition state. That is, uh, first would be for w. That is, if S of I is V and S of I minus one is also V. Then I'll get these transition states of W and else if S of I is O, then I'll get these, this transition state of O. So this is my overall solution. Let's look at the code of this. So first we just took the string uh, S as input. We took N as this 
length of the string and then we created our dp of size n cross 4 right i have taken n plus 1 again because i am using one base indexing in the majority of my dp then i have initialized dp of i of 0 as 1 note i have not done i uh, less than equal to n because it doesn't matter right in the last state even if our empty string is uh, like dp of n of 0 is 0 it doesn't matter exactly because it will never contribute to dp of n of 4 which will finally be our answer right so i think i did not cover one two parts over here First part would be, we will also be carry forwarding our values, right? That is, for all conditions, dp of i of j, in that we will be adding dp of i minus 1 of j, right? This will be like, we will be carry forwarding the old values to the new values. We will carry forward the old values to the new values. This is one part I think I did not cover till now. So, it's very self-explanatory that uh, we will be carry forwarding, that is, till index i minus 1 the number of ways we had we will add it to the number of ways we had till index i and in the transition states we are getting the new number of ways so this is the old number of ways we have added and this is the new number of ways we, are, we can get of this index right so since we are having the transition or we are already carry forwarding the values our final answer will just become dp of n of 4 oh, sorry dp of n of 3 right that is number of ways till index n number of ways till index n to get uh, our subsequence length of 3 and that is WOW entire uh, string, right? Substring length of 3, not sorry, not substring, subsequence length of 3, right? So that is uh, why our final answer would be dp of n of 3. So again, uh, coming back to the code, uh, I took my for loop i is equal to 1, i less than n, i plus plus. I started i from 1 and not from 0 because in our string s, uh, even if the first index is a single V or a single O, it doesn't matter. It will never contribute to the answer. Only if the first two index indices are V together, that is I and I minus 1 are V. So if you have I and I minus 1 as V, that is when our solution will actually start getting values, right? Till then we cannot get a W. So getting an O before a W doesn't matter in our subsequence, right? So that is why I started I from 1. Then our condition for W, that is uh, I, S of I and S of I minus 1 are V. Then the transition states for w uh, as you can see they are the same what i had written earlier and if s of i is o then the transition state of o and then in the end we'll be carry forwarding the old values that is dp of i plus 1 of 1 in that we'll add dp of i of 1 and similarly for all of them i'm not doing this for zero because i have already handled it over here i've already done it in my uh, while defining the base conditions right i could have done dp of 0 of 0 is 1 and then carry forwarded all values over here something like that but I have just initialized dp of 0 earlier itself at the start. So I don't need to carry forward uh, the state of 0 over here. And in the end, our final answer would be dp of n of 3. And that's it for the solution. Now let's discuss the time and space complexity of the solution. So first taking, uh, so we have the string over here. Over here we have initialized the dp of size n, right? So this would be of order of n. And this overall for loop runs in order of n and inside it we don't have any additional loops. So even this will run in order of n itself. So overall time complexity of our solution just becomes order of n, which is well within the bounds. And for the space complexity, we have the string of size n as input and we also have our dp which is of size 4 into n, right? So we can ignore the constant part of 4 and we can say that the overall space complexity of our solution is also order of n. So I hope you are able to understand the solution. Thank you.